Honorable Guruji, we acknowledge your presence, Giriji. Thank you for being here. There are three types of people on the planet. Fun people, some people who are ever inspired in life. Whenever you meet them, you found them very much inspired. Remember, if you met them 12 years back or 20 years back, you found them very much inspired. Even today when you meet them, you find them, they are very much inspired in life. Ever inspired people. They have vision in their eyes, they have fire in their belly. Then and today even. Type 2. Never inspired. 20 years back when you met him, he was not inspired. Even when you may meet him today, he has some or the other issues he is struggling with. And he has genuine reasons behind it. Logics behind it. And type 3, who dangle in between. Mondays ever inspired, Fridays never inspired. Somebody appreciated ever inspired, somebody condemned never inspired, got a promotion in time ever inspired, delayed promotion never inspired, they dangle in between. So type 1 ever inspired, type 2 never inspired, type 3 dangle in between. Let me ask you which type do you belong to? How many of you belong to type 1? Nice. Ever inspired. How many of you belong to type 2? Never inspired. No hand raising. I used to think, uh, Professor Saab, why nobody raises hands saying never inspired? Then I realize even in order to raise hand, you need little bit of inspiration. <laughs> so they are not even inspired to raise their hands. And type 3 who? How many of you belong to type 3? Let's be honest. Perfect. So, Lord Buddha was once asked, what is it in this type 1 people, which type 2 and type 3 are lacking, how they are ever inspired in the same job, same profession, same area, same age, and what they are lacking. Buddha smiled and replied, Buddham Sharanam Gachami. Dhammam Sharanam Gachami. Sangham Sharanam Gachami. Buddha probably wanted also to say this that those people who are ever inspired in life, they always have these three things in them. One, Buddham. They always have a mentor in their life who inspires them. They have somebody with whom they can share their heart out. They can talk their heart out. And that Buddham can be anybody. My daughter's name is Titiksha. When Titiksha was very small. And when I used to go out. Or his bua used to go out of home. She used to cry loud. As if they, she is never going to meet her bua again. Auntie again. But we all family members used to smile and console her because we were grown-ups. We knew she is going for some time. She'll be back again. One fine day, something striked to me that Titiksha is trying to teach me an important lesson. The way her auntie was going and she was thinking that she is going for eternity and that's why she is crying. Same happens to all of us when our close ones depart from this planet and we start crying. Only he knows that nobody ever departs. Bhagavad Gita says, Krishna says to Arjuna, Oh Arjuna, it has never been when you were not there or I was not there. The only difference is you forgot but I remember everything. We are eternal beings. This is what Swami Vivekananda said that Amrata Seputra. We are eternal beings. Titiksha taught me this lesson when she was only one and a half years old. So anybody we can be your buddham. Where you are inducted, your officer, your senior, your mother, your spouse, your friend. Anybody can be buddham. I give you 10 seconds to think who is buddham of your life. Who gave direction? Who is the person talking to whom you feel so light is buddham. Buddham sharnam gachami. Buddha said you should always have a buddham in life. When you have buddham in life, you can share your heart. But 
when you have nobody to share you start depositing everything in your subconscious and from there subconscious reacts back and research says when people are have stuffed so much is stuffed in subconscious many of us who are at senior positions we are trained looking at your face nobody can understand what is going in your heart with a rigid face you can go and get your work done but in your subconscious so much stuffing is there and that's why people become unpredictable that's why suicide rates are increasing research says when people have so much in subconscious they get angry soon they have low tolerance they don't give easy leaves to their employees they drive fast they eat fast they speak fast life becomes slow when subconscious is emptied stillness the first thing we need to have for sure is buddham sharanam gachami now my question to all of you is how many of you have one person in your life or maybe some person in your life with whom you can share absolutely everything the best thing of your life the best or the worst thought without thinking what he will think without thinking whether the person will will mock you later or maybe will will taunt you later without thinking anything how raise your hand how many of you have somebody in your life with you you can share everything research says when you have somebody in your life life with you with whom you can share absolutely everything people will remain more inspired in life but then people went and asked buddha unfortunately at the moment i have nobody to share you you do a research on all the suicides you'll find this the person had nobody to share i have limited time otherwise i can have given you 10 case studies about it second sen buddha was asked that if if i have nobody to share can't i remain inspired buddha smiled and said dhammam sharanam gachami if you don't have the master follow the message master is nothing but the message himself impersonified unfortunately we have created a society where we have started valuing the masters rather than mastering the values they represent guru ji rightly said last 10th sikh guru rightly said that ab shabd hi guru hoga the words will lead guru granth sahib has been leading six for last 500 years valuing the masters is less important than mastering the values and for that we need to know what values they propagated and they gave us the manual of life called bhagavad gita called upanishads called vedanta called gita called bible zend avesta these are manuals of life reading scriptures make you fearless when rockefeller was asked how will you define swami vivekanand in a single word rockefeller said he is fearless this is what scriptures make you you have nothing but still you are fearless when rockefeller asked that i have, i am living very happily what can you offer to me i am richest and the happiest i am living very happily what can you contribute swami swami ji replied i am glad that you are living happily i can teach you how to live happily because at when the moment comes all your dhairy or your patience shatters reading scriptures like ramayana every scripture has some metaphors in it when dashratha stands for 10 indriyas five sense organs and five action organs unknowingly kills shravan kumara and then the whole ramayana begins who is shravan kumara shravan means listening shravan kumara dashrath means me when any individual stops listening the ramayana of his life begins start listening it is no wonder no coincidence all the greatest scriptures on the planet were heard gita was heard by arjuna sanjaya they it was heard vedas were heard they are shrutis quran descended on mohammed sahab when moses was there on that mountain the ten commandments descended he heard guru nanak when he used to meditate suddenly 
he used to open his eyes and he used to say his friend mardana mardana rabab chhod bani aayi hai i am receiving from where are they receiving receiving rishiyati iti rishi they received the grand messages and our forefathers has given those messages to us unfortunately when swami chinnamann was asked that hinduism is in danger swami ji said yes i agree hinduism is in danger and the danger is from hindus themselves who never read their own scriptures so the second is dhamma misharnam gachami read these scriptures they'll make you fearless third is my next question to you is how many of you read every month one book complete about life not livelihood raise your hands research says people read or listen doesn't matter people say when you read any person who reads about life every month remains more inspired and person went to buddha and said but even i don't read also no exposure to scriptures then buddha said in that case sangham sharanam gachami at least be in the company of right minded people sangham satsang kijiye like minded no a corrupt will have another corrupt at like minded a lazy you will find another lazy as like minded you will find some people who like to be late and they'll find another person who is late so that they shouldn't feel much ashamed you'll find a like smoker will find another smoker sangham is right minded people arjuna entered into the battlefield to lose because he was shattered karna entered into the battlefield to win confident the purpose of his life but arjuna got company satsanga of lord krishna and karna got dusanga of shalya karna ended up losing in the battle arjuna ended up winning in the battle it's the satsanga that matters the people in which you sit the people in with whom you talk they make the big difference assure that people around you should be right minded now my next question to you how many of you have one person or some people around you to whom you talk on daily basis and that person is extremely positively charged full of life and vitality and you talk to them on daily basis can you raise your hands research says if you have such person in life you'll feel more inspired and that fellow again went to lord buddha said you know what still i know if a person do not have a buddham nor a sang nor dhammam nor sangham can't i remain inspired in life and the master like buddha again smiled he said still there is a way out buddha smiled and said appadipo bhava if you have neither the master nor the message nor the people around you then there is a sadguru what guru what nanaka said there is a sadguru here who always inspires you in all the dark situations of life because we are eternal being nothing has ever been erased from our memory all great karmic accounts are still here we are the son of eternity we are son of god we know this is what is the most beautiful thing about vedanta vedanta does not differentiate between human and human even vedanta does not differentiate between human and god we are god vedanta said you are god forgotten the moment you remember your true nature there is no difference between you and god you are that god such a humble such a great announcement aham brahmasmi for that meditation self talk swadhyaya reflecting upon our own nature what we are saying what we are doing what is the purpose of life when we keep on doing it solitude how what should be the duration of solitude equal to your age if you are 50 years of age at least 50 minutes of solitude daily nobody no means of entertainment let me ask you a question 
I'm going to pray something from God. And if you agree with their prayer, you just need to raise your hands and say Tathastu. But I warn you, if you say Tathastu, it will happen. If I have done anything good in life, it will happen. So you be mindful whether you want to say Tathastu or not. I'm not telling you to say Tathastu. I'm leaving it to you. I will just do the prayer, leave it to you. If it comes from here, say Tathastu. And if it doesn't, don't say Tathastu. I'm offering whole sattva of this conference to this question. The question is, fine, so I'm going to pray something from God. And if you think it is right, and to say Tathastu, raise your hand and say Tathastu. The prayer is, goes like this, Oh God, I wish that my kids should take up the same habits, character, behavior, and nature as I have. <laughs> I prostrate to the honesty within you. <laughs> I congratulate those people who raised their hands. Great. I also understand people who did not raise hands because every parent wants their kid to be a better version of them. Their hand must also have vibrated to be raised, but something must have pushed them back. No, you don't want it to be in that person, in, in your kid. So, when that thing is so bad, that you don't want it to be there in your kids. Why it is in you? Kids are CCTV cameras of our home. They do not do what you tell them to do. They do what they see you doing. I was in US in a dog school when we were going somewhere and we, we were leaving that dog someplace. So it was written there. Be the person your dog thinks you are. Because see, from the point of view of the dog, the owner is the best person on the planet. He loves the owner unconditionally. I just want to say, let's be the person our kids think we are. We are proven role models of our kids. Let's live a life of that difference that we want to create in the society. And that comes by meditation. So I'm sure... Now onwards, we all will have one master. So many are here. We all will have one master in life. And if we don't have any master, at least we will do something that we will become master for others at least. Let's take a promise to ourselves that we will read scriptures. And if we can't, at least we will lead our life in a way that it will become a message to others. We will be in satsang of good people. And if we cannot, at least we can become a satsang for others. We will listen to our conscience. And we will inspire others also to listen to their conscience. Thank you very much.